Joining us now is Ojinika Ojiokwe with stories trending around the world. Hello, Junix. Good morning, Dr. Abati. How are you uh, this morning? I'm good. Excellent. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very I, I good. know we you're going to say something. We received an invitation on your behalf. Okay. What is Cross that about? Kingdom Society. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. program. Yeah, I'll go with Ayomi. <laughs> my my Ayomi, <laughs> the feast of one. I think you should go with Tiffany. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, no, I prefer to go with you. <laughs> Trust me on that one, for sure. Well, all right. Well, good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu castigated human rights groups, the United Nations and women's groups for failing to speak out about the rape and other atrocities committed by Hamas against Israeli women. Speaking at a press conference in Tel Aviv on Tuesday, the Prime Minister stated that the IDF has killed around half of Hamas's commanders and are bringing to a reckoning anyone who abducted, murdered, slaughtered, raped, and burned the sons and daughters of Israel, noting that they will not forgive and will not forget. I say to the women's rights organizations, to the human rights organizations, you've heard of the rape of Israeli women, horrible atrocities, sexual mutilation. Where the hell are you? I expect all civilized leaders, governments, nations to speak up against this atrocity. In North Korea, Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un broke down in tears in front of thousands of women as he called on women to have more children, saying that it was their duty to halt the country's declining birth rate. In his emotional plea, the Supreme Leader is seen dabbing his eyes with a handkerchief while addressing the women at a National Mothers' Meeting in Pyongyang on December 3rd. The event was the first National Mothers' Meeting in 11 years. In Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Tuesday returned to Abuja after attending the 28th United Nations Climate Change Conference in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. The president at the conference had bilateral talks with King Charles III, the president of UAE, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, and leaders of several countries and multilateral partners. Tinubu also witnessed the signing of an accelerated performance agreement between Nigeria and Germany to improve Nigeria's electricity supply. He also hosted a high-level meeting with stakeholders and investors on the Nigeria carbon market. Then, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Torid Lagbaja on Tuesday prayed for the victims of the accidental bombing which killed over 80 people and left scores badly injured at Tudun Biri in Kaduna State. The Nigerian army claimed responsibility for the incident, stating that its troops were on a routine mission against terrorists when the mistake occurred. The Chief of Army Staff, in an emotion-laden speech, expressed regret on the unfortunate mishap, describing it as a very disheartening occurrence. Finally, the chairman of this day and Arise Media Group, Prince Unduka Obaigbena, has been named Lifetime Achievement Awardee of the 2023 Diamond Awards for Media Excellence for his contribution to the media and his dedication to mentoring leaders in the industry. The award was initiated in 1991 to promote and recognize professionalism in the media by awarding outstanding individuals and organizations. Obaigbena, who is a recipient of the National Honor of the Commander of the Order of the Niger, has also earned the highest journalistic honor of the Fellowship of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. In a letter, the organizers of the award ceremony cited his advocacy and commitment to a free, strong, and enterprising media. His unwavering defense of free expression and of the media, and his uncommon genius as qualities that recommended him for the award.
Congratulations to the chairman. We cannot wait for Sunday. We're all going to go there. Yes. I, uh, I mean, it's an amazing award. I mean, he deserves it. As I said, he has been a huge advocate for free speech, free media. I mean, Dr. Abati, you obviously have been in this journalistic industry for years, <coughs> decades. So well, you obviously know what this type of award means. Certainly, I agree with you that the award is very well deserved. And, uh, you know, people should note that uh, Arise TV, Arise News, is now well established as an award-winning, you know, uh, news medium. And who is the uh, best person to cap the year uh, with this uh, award uh, from the DIM, as the institution giving the award uh, is called. DIM has been uh, monitoring professionalism and contributions to journalism since 1991. And the award, you know, is a very pr prestigious one. Now this year, what they have done is that they have introduced this category called Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm -hmm. And they've given it to uh, Prince Sundukao Baibena of uh, Arise News, This Day, uh, the Arise Media Group, the This Day Media Group, in recognition of his uh, contributions to journalism, which, of course, have been profound, impactful, very visible, and very progressive and robust. And also, the... Uh, 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 promoters of the award also noted his efforts in nurturing and building professionals. Yes. You know, uh, one of the great things that has happened has been the innovativeness of the uh, Disney Media Group, uh, identifying uh, talent. Some of the boys who are now big boys uh, in the media, they cut their teeth as, uh, you know, copy chasers in, uh, in Disney newspaper, and many of them are now big men. They'll be saying, I've been doing journalism for so many years. <laughs> it's because, you know, uh, Obagwena provided uh, an enabling environment for them to express themselves. And he has moved from print also to television, and he has been able to achieve this. So great entrepreneurship. So what Dame is uh, celebrating is salute to entrepreneurship, salute to professionalism in the media industry, is salute to mentoring. Many of the Obagmina boys have since gone uh, to different places. And it is as they honor, all the honors that he has received. Over 10 years ago, he became a fellow of the Nigerian Guild of Editors. Twice, for two terms, he has been uh, president of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria. He has also been uh, recognized by the Nigerian government with the uh, national honor of the commander of the order of the Niger, CUN. You know, so the awards keep coming. And, uh, you know, the, the only thing to add is that uh, as he celebrates and we join him in celebrating, you should know that this has implications. Yeah, implications. We are the, same rule, the same rule that appears to us in this studio <laughs> also appears to him oh, when Sunday. it comes to him implications. Absolutely. Except you want to celebrate on his behalf. No, you can do if, that, if, Dr. Abati. I'm sure you can. <laughs> but you know we'll all be there. If you invite me to we'll the celebration, there. I'll be there. there. <laughs> we'll be there cheering him on. But I, mean, I love the picture illustration. You can see that the yeah. prince has met everyone, basically from Henry Kissinger, who recently died. Yeah. And you could see him with Bill Gates. Wow. And leaders. world leaders, it's just amazing how far he's gone. Congratulations to the Duke of Oa Kingdom. Well, let's continue on what's trending. Well, the Nigerian Air Force announced on Tuesday that the federal government has approved the sale of its Falcom 900B aircraft, Air Force spokesperson Edward Gapquet, in an invitation letter posted on X, asked interested buyers to submit beads via email or physically for the stating that the aircraft is available for inspection at the 307 EAG hangar of the Nnamdi Azikiwe International Airport in Abuja. The letter also stated that all bids should be quoted in dollars, while submissions should not be later than December 24th. I mean, this is a welcome development, I would say. I mean, we know that the presidency has about 10 aircrafts. We don't know how much this is going to be sold for. That's the question a lot of people are asking. But if you look at, if you look online, you know, a, a aircraft like that could go anywhere between, you know, three to five million dollars and all of that. So those are the questions that have been posed. But in the meantime, while some Nigerians are applauding the move to sell the NAF aircraft, 
Vice President Kashim Shatima has defended the administration's decision to spend 15 billion naira to build a residence for him in Abuja. Shatima, through his spokesperson, was responding to recent criticisms of the project by the presidential candidate of the Labour Party during the 2023 elections, Peter Obi, who questioned why the government planned to spend so much money on building and renovating residences both in Abuja and Lagos for the vice president, but budgeted a paltry five billion naira for student loans in the country. The vice president denounced Obi's comments, describing it as a series of misguided attacks and falsehoods, stating that the decision to resume the project, which was abandoned by previous administrations, was in line with the Tinubu administration's commitment at completing long-abandoned public projects across the country. Shatima further accused Obi of post-election trauma and divisive rhetoric, urging him and others in opposition to accept defeat gracefully and prioritize Nigeria's interests. I believe the director pulled up Obi's Peter Obi's tweet. Let me just get some of that. What Obi said, I believe, on Monday was that uh, he, he wrote, even as I am still studying the 2024 fiscal budget as presented to the National Assembly last week, I cannot wait as I am compelled to ask, what is exactly wrong with us as a country? I mean, this tweet got a lot of reactions. He further went on to say, the budget of 5 billion naira for student loans, which is yet to be disbursed, is only a tiny percentage of the cost of the vice president's new home. We are projecting to use four times the amount for educating all Nigerian indigent students to house the vice president. We need leaders to show compassion and are willing to sacrifice for common progress and development. Such compassionate and frugal leaders are critical in our journey to the new Nigeria. Over to you while I catch my breath. Ayo Mude. Absolutely. I, I, first of all, before I comment on the story, I must say that thank you to the opposition leaders, um, opposition, Absolutely. for doing what they are supposed to do, which is, as in opposition, um, check government, criticize when necessary, and also give alternatives as well. I think that's also one area that we must look into. So beyond just um, pointing out where the government isn't doing very right, is also giving an alternative solution to the issues at hand. So that's that. So thank you so much. And, and, in, and in saying that, I must say that the um, you know vice president response shouldn't shame Pre um, Mr. Peter Obi for doing what he ought to be doing, Absolutely. being in the opposition. That is checking, going through documents, and not just him. I'm, I could also see so civil society organizations like Budget and the likes who have also taken it upon themselves, journalists as well, to criticize, to critically look at the budget and bring out or, or point out things in there that ought not to be there. When you look at the current state of affairs in Nigeria, especially economically, Unfortunately, there's no justification. It's the same way where they try to justify the number of people that were sponsored to COP28, saying that, oh, it was important under the current economic climate. It's the same way they're trying to justify the fact that in front of the Vanguard newspaper today, there's a further breakdown of how much money is being spent, in, you know, especially um, at state level. Uh, 15 billion naira on trips is what's budgeted in 2024 elections. A villa mechanical electrical maintenance at 9 billion naira. All these OG are higher than the student loan. So this is where you put education and this is where you put sustaining or maintaining buildings or funding the lifestyle of people in government. Not reflective at all. Vehicles, even though um, in the supplementary budget we talked about the vehicle allocation, there's still a vehicle allocation of 6 billion naira in the 2025, um, 2024 budget. Then we have honorarium, which is, well, that's a party 300 and 65.8 million naira. And then you wonder that what really is the priority of this particular government? What is the priority? When, they, um, when um, President Tinubu was campaigning and even during his inauguration speech, he had talked about his commitment to security, to education, to the young people in Nigeria. But it's not reflective in the spending and what the budget um, talks about. So if you're giving 15 billion naira to renovate, the presidential quarters, which, by the way, is not necessary at this time. I say that emphatically. Um, Rufai keeps giving the example of the, uh, of, the vi of the prime minister of France, who cannot even dare say he wants to touch his official residence because the people will be up in, ar in arms. And then here we are, battling an economic crisis, whereby we're looking at the um, budget deficits, we're looking at revenue shortage, we're looking at um, having to service debt, and what we're focused on is spending billions of naira on buildings 
loans and trips. And then we are putting 5 billion naira to give to student loans that people, you know, the students and us who are saying that is nowhere near enough. We have to rethink. And as um, John Maxwell says, everything starts and rises and falls with leadership. Our leaders must begin to demonstrate that they are part of this society we live in and they are in touch with the sufferings of the people. I hope that this will be shut down in the House. I hope, that being the key word, because as we said, it looks like a rubber stamp assembly, but I hope that when it's defended in the House, they will shut it down and take off some numbers and not actually inflate these numbers under these categories. Well said, Ayo. Uh, Dr. Vati, I'd like for you to you know, start with the NAF aircraft, my first story. Okay. I mean, well, the, uh, you, you recall that uh, when uh, President uh, Buhari was campaigning. One of the things he said in 2019, ahead of the 2019 election, was that he was going to sell some of the aircraft uh, in the presidential fleet. Yes. But he got there, he didn't uh, sell any aircraft. If anything, I think under his watch, they even acquired, you know, another an additional helicopter. But now this time around, under the uh, uh, Chinubu administration. They are trying to sell off uh, one of the Nigerian Air Force uh, aircraft. Mm. The Nigerian Air Force, by the way, manages the uh, presidential fleet, yes. and they have all the ceremonial aircraft that they use uh, for official purposes. So this one is said to be a Falcon, right? Now, the only thing that I see here is that, well, I don't know about aircraft, but this aircraft has been commissioned, has been in service since 1990. But people who know the subject say, with an aircraft, it's not the age that matters, yes. it's the quality of the uh, maintenance. But the only caveat that I have here is that they're asking people to do an open bid, either to do it virtually or to do it physically. And if you do it physically, you seal it, all in line with the Public Procurement Act of uh, 2007, as uh, Air Commodore Gap, Gap Quart, uh pointed out. Now they are saying that the payment will be in dollars. Why would uh, the Nigerian government, Nigerian Air Force, want to sell aircraft, Nigerian-owned aircraft, operated by Nigerian Air Force, and they are quoting in dollars? The currency of Nigeria is in uh, Naira. It's Naira. So they, are, they, are, they will exclude people who uh, are patriots, who spend Naira. The CBN Act of uh, uh, 2005, says that the, the current 2007 says that the national currency of Nigeria is the Naira. So if the federal government wants to sell a commodity, forget the fact that it's an aircraft and they want to sell it in dollars. So why would anybody then complain again if uh, landlords are collecting rent in dollars, if some supermarkets, some markets, some shops, luxury shops, by the way, it's not wrong. your kind of supermarket. That's why I, I quickly change uh, the phrase. The luxury shops are, are selling items in dollars. So, and there are some government departments that I even understand quote and accept payment in dollars. Yes. Now, look, if we want the Naira to have integrity, maybe we should do transactions more in Naira. I don't know, some people may be laughing and say, how much... Uh, uh, how much uh, lorry loads of Naira will purchase one uh, aircraft. That is good to see that they are cutting fat. Yeah. They need to cut fat, yes. not just with the fleet managed by the Nigerian Air Force, but also cut fat, run a lean government, a more efficient government in every area, including the meals that they cons consume uh, at the highest levels and including the trips that they embark upon, whether to Dubai or, uh, or to uh, elsewhere. As for the statement credited to the vice president, I checked that statement. That was a statement issued by his uh, spokesperson, yes. uh, Stanley Nkocha. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I've seen Stanley Nkocha issuing a statement. Sometimes I tell our colleagues or you know the boys that are on the block now that it's not everything you respond to. There's nothing that uh, uh, Mr. Obi said, Peter Obi said that uh, Waziri Adamawa has not said that all of us on this table did not say about uh, you know the the building because we said look at a time when there is austerity in the land we shouldn't be talking about big big structures but the explanation by Stanley Nkocha is that this was a project that had been there and an abandoned project since 2010 and that government has returned to it. The FCTA, Federal Capital Territory Administration, led by Yesom Wike, which manages structures 
in the Federal Capital Territory says he, do, he doesn't want abandoned projects. But he has gone to start with, uh, you know, the VP's residence. When we had earlier been told in the supplementary budget that, you know, provisions have been made for the renovation of the VP's uh, residence. So that's why people are raising uh, issues. So all the explanations given by Stanley Nkocha uh, it doesn't make sense. But the, the funny part of it that I found is that uh, uh, Peter B is suffering from post-election trauma. Now, using such strong language will not stop the opposition Absolutely from speaking. Yeah. So spokespersons should know their limits. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's one thing to be, to be seen to be working. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think it's the VP himself that will go and, uh, and say, okay, go and write a statement to go and abuse uh, Peter Vin. Nobody does that. But Stanley Okocha will jump ahead and say, I have to defend my ogre. I have to defend my ogre. If he, if he wants to do that with this emerging opposition, mm -hmm. he, he, will, he will be busy every day yes. writing rejoinders. Yes. I love that word, emerging opposition. I love the fact, and, and your point is quite valid, the fact that these two oppositions, they're out here now questioning all the facts. We have Atiku Abubaka yes. and uh, Peter will be continuing to, you know, shine light on these issues that disturb Nigerians. Well, let's head over to Namibia now, where some citizens are outraged after learning that their president, Heike Nob's four children, joined the government's delegation to the COP28 climate summit in Dubai. The president's children were among six of the president's family members listed as part of Namibia's delegation in Dubai. Kenob's office on Monday confirmed that his children traveled to the city but denied claims that their trip was state-funded. However, some Namibians have dismissed the presidency's response as unsatisfactory, saying it fails to prove that the president's family privately funded the trip. Other critics also asked the president to explain the role of his family members at COP28. Uh, uh, Ayo, we took this story earlier. I mean, it's not the first time we're seeing these African leaders doing this. I mean, we talked about Nigeria, we talked about Nigeria, Kenya, Kenya, we talked Kenya, about Tanzania, Tanzania, we talked about Ghana, Ghana with 618 delegates. What is wrong with us Africans as a, <laughs> as a continent? Do you know when I saw this, I was like, yeah. another African country, yes. and then almost as if when we finish the script in Nigeria, we'll pass yes. it on to the next country, because it's almost the same accusation. We had, had asked yesterday about the president's son being at COP28, who funded his um, trip. They, they may say he's able to, I mean, I must say that he's, he has money to pay for a trip to yes. Dubai. But also the question as well is what is their presence and what capacity are they going there as? The president, has the president appointed him as SA? And in the same vein, um, the Namibians are asking, and I love the fact that citizens are coming up, rising up and being able to um, question actions by their leaders because that is part of active citizenship, whereby we don't just fold hands and watch things un unfold, but we actually take part in governance through um, um, asking questions and raising pertinent um, questions. So the fact that he went there, he has come out to deny the fact that the government paid for his family's trip to um, Dubai. However, the people are not satisfied with the explanation because they're asking, okay, if, if they didn't pay, why are they there? Because apparently one parliamentary member was denied attending due to financial constraints. And so what they're wondering is that if you're not giving a government official who has a right to be at COP28 to attend, then why are family members attending? Why are they part of the delegation? So that's the question that people are asking. I, th I think as, as, you know, as a continent, we need to rise up. So we, we stop being a joke in terms of wanting to just go, in the words of Nigerian, you know, so what people have called jamboree mm -hmm. in, in, in Dubai. But I must also say, it mustn't take the attention from the gains from um, COP28. During your headline, you talked mm -hmm. about what Nigeria had gained, um, investment in electricity, potentially some other, um, um, you know, signing of um, agreement, also perhaps our access to the loss and damage fund. These are wins for us as a nation. I think it's very important. Well, all right. Shall we take our final story on a lighter note? Um, well, in a recent event held in Nasara State, a video has emerged featuring Polasha de Tinubojo, the Yaloja General of Lagos and daughter of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, being introduced as the Queen of Nigeria. We have the most special guest of honor, a role model, the first daughter of the Federation, the Yaloja General of Lagos. Queen Mama, the beautiful, most beautiful Queen of Nigeria. Please let put hands together to welcome her with love. 
Run create the first daughter of creation. She said she was born by Ah, when the look at she, Tashi Gota Rega Tawaka Tababaya, the Ialoja General of Lagos, the Ialoja General of Nigeria. Together with her entourage, we are most welcoming you to this very special day. Exchanging pleasantries with the wife of the DG DSS, Haja Aisha Yusuf. And at this very moment, she's going to I love that MC. She must get a national on. I mean, that was a grand introduction. Now she's the queen of Nigeria, Dr. Abati. Please. <laughs> so, is this some of this uh, compass that I see? A yeah. certain variety. Yeah. When they are in high spirits like this, yes. the suspicion is that maybe if they're taking a quantum of sin, you know, so because I don't understand what. All that adulation is all about. Yeah. The General of uh, Lagos, the <laughs> General of uh, Nigeria, she forgot to add the uh, first daughter oh. of the Federal Republic of, of Nigeria. Nigeria. I don't know what number you are <laughs> <laughs> in the imagine. ranking of the I daughters. can't even imagine. And then on top of it, now yes. Queen of Nigeria. Queen of Nigeria. Yeah. I love it. It provided an entertainment. I love it. I, yes, thought but, I uh, should end it on a nice you know, note. What we're more interested in yes. is... <laughs> The president yes. and all the other elected persons Absolutely. to do their work, Absolutely. not how their sons and daughters <laughs> are, are Absolutely. celebrated. Yes, well, all right. I'd like to thank you both for your great analysis, as always, on what's trending. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.